Do you have a question for our future Seahawks mailbag? If you do, follow this rather simple two-step process. Number one, make sure you are subscribed. Hit that big red bo button. That way you don't miss out on any Seahawks video, and you can be a part of a future mailbag by using hashtag Seahawks with whatever your question is in the comment section. Another way to get your questions on the show is to respond when we put up our community polls here on the channel asking for all questions, which you can only see if you are subscribed. Let's dive in then to our first question from Braxton Brower. How much would you pay Russell Wilson on an extension? Uh, my answer is yes. I, I would give him whatever he wants because you can structure it in a way that pays him a lot of money without paying him a lot of money on the immediate salary cap that is the best way to do these types of things it's what smart teams have done so with that in mind here's my projected extension what i'd give russell wilson right now the numbers almost don't matter but here's what they are four years 44 million per year 150 million guaranteed because he's got years left on his deal you can include some of that guaranteed money and what he's making right now and push money out into the future in later years when the salary cap goes up and or you're not as worried about it. And this would make Russell Wilson the second highest paid QB in the NFL. I would wonder if Russ wants to become the highest paid QB, which hasn't really been mentioned, but again, you can structure these deals in a way to keep the salary cap hit down. None of those guys are actually counting $40 million on the cap or more. In fact, you know, Dak Prescott, only on a new extension, he costs less than $20 million this year for the Cowboys. So you can make that stuff work fairly easily. If you have your franchise guy, pay him. Keep him happy. Keep the cap hit low so you can pay other players at other positions to ensure you're maximizing your window with your franchise QB. I want to be aggressive. I want to pay Russ right now. So I'm curious, what would you pay Russell Wilson per year? Fill in the blank for me. I would pay Russell Wilson blank million per year. This will be the pinned comments on today's video. So if the ad break comes here on YouTube, go take advantage of it. While the ad plays, head down there and fill in the blank for me. From SC Shorts. Who would Seahawks add at corner? What would a Gerald Everett trade look like? So first up on Everett, uh, you can't trade him. He is a free agent, so you will not tag and trade him because no one wants him. You can't trade him. But as for corner, my actual step number one is, is I, I'd re-sign DJ Reed. I, I think Reed is a fantastic player. I was very impressed by him this year. I would pay him almost whatever it takes within reason, of course, not quite the same as, you know, the Russell Wilson conversation, but I want to retain him. Then I would have interest in adding a big time for Here's some of the top guys, right? J.C. Jackson, probably too expensive. Stephon Gilmore might be a bit more affordable. Casey Hayward, I feel like he's going to the, to the Colts now because he's going to follow his, his old D.C. there. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see that actually in the case. And Gus Bradley, of course, former Seahawks legend. If you want a nickel, Bryce Callahan is a good name to keep an eye out for there. Darius Williams might, and I think will at the open market, so he's probably more obtainable than, say, a Jackson. But I would have interest in corner. And frankly, I'd love to draft one early. This team does not do that. And maybe they believe in Trey Brown and they want to re-sign re Sidney Jones. I get all that. But I, look, Derek Sidney, Sauce Gardner, those guys aren't going to be there. Now, if for some reason they fall, you actually probably don't want them with something bad, but I'd have interest anyway. Three other names. Trent McDuffie, the local kid. Kyer Elam, Andrew Booth might, might be on the board for you. If there's a good corner, unless you've already paid guys in free agency and or your own players, I would strongly consider adding one early in the draft, despite that not being Seattle's typical MO. They always go cheap at corner, at least often go cheap at corner. Speaking of free agency, well, we've got a list of free agent targets for the Seattle Seahawks. The video thumbnail looks like that one. And then there's the draft version. As well, of course, focused in on early round two guys. You can get all those videos and more for free right here at Seattle Seahawks Today. So if you haven't already, hit that big red button and subscribe for more free videos on the Seahawks. Join us. That way you don't miss out on anything here at Seattle Seahawks Today. From Huzao, 
if I got that wrong, I'm, I'm sorry. I think, I think I got it right, but I'm honestly not sure. What is the weakest position on the Seahawks right now, and how could they fill it? The weakest one at this exact moment in time, I believe, is cornerback. And I'm factoring in free agency in that area because DJ Reed, Sidney Jones, are free. Those are two of your top three guys. Now, you're fine at nickel, but if you don't retain those guys, you're looking at starting as CB1, CB2, Trey Brown and John Reed? Ugh, it's not great. I would re-sign your own guys, maybe invest in a free agent. Beyond that, I think offensive tackle is also a big area of need because Dwayne Brown and Brandon Shell are your free agents. That leaves Stone Forsyth and Jake Curran. So that's what happens when we're in February. Your biggest needs are the ones with a bunch of your own free agents. They will address that in some capacity early on in free agency. From Connor Clark. What do you think Russell Wilson's trade value is? Do you think it drops to how this past season went? And do you think a team like the Panthers or Steelers would make a run to get him? I think those are actually two good teams uh, that could make a big-time splash. Now, I'm going to cross off Carolina because outside of their first-round pick, they don't have much. Uh, they're very light on draft capital. You're going to build a package on McCaffrey, a, a young defensive piece? Could actually work, maybe throwing Brian Burns, but that doesn't really fill your your help your team out in the short term. Pittsburgh could be a bit more aggressive, given where they're at with their roster. I do think Russell Wilson still has immense trade value. Um, yeah, this year was a bit of a down year, but Pittsburgh staring down starting Mason Rudolph. So. Getting a top 5, top 10, top 12, whatever QB, that carries value. Now, I'll throw in Devin Bush as a trade idea. You know, three firsts and a player. A little bit less than the three firsts and, and two guys or four early picks and a player that the Texans wanted uh, for Deshaun Watson because Russell Wilson's older. And Devin Bush would make sense for Seattle because in this scenario, I think you're probably moving on from Bobby Wagner because you trade Russ, you're, you're going to be rebuilding in Seattle. So as it relates to Wilson, remember, don't trade, pay him, keep him. Is he a top five QB? Type in a Y for yes, he is, or type in N for no. Uh, look, a Russell Wilson trade idea. Uh, from Yasher, uh, best Wilson trade deal. Eagles get Wilson, Seattle gets Jalen Hurts in two firsts. If you believe Jalen Hurts is a franchise QB, then yes. I don't really think that he is, so this is a decent-ish offer, but... I still think you're looking for a better franchise QB than Hurts. I think he's a top 20-ish guy, but he's not enough for your franchise. And I think he can be a good player for you, but you're probably going to be trying to move on from him. That doesn't really you know, get you enough then from that perspective. All right, from Braxton again, does Russell Wilson win MVP next year? Who will be our new offensive line coach? So we'll, we'll focus this here on the offensive line side of it. That's going to be the, the plan here. I don't, know if, I don't think they have a picture done. Is that Andy Dickerson is going to be promoted to the offensive line coach. Andy Dickerson this past year was the run game coordinator for the Seattle Seahawks. Now this is noteworthy because he comes over from the LA Rams in the past as well. So this indicates to me, this is a Shane Waldron type of move that he wants to get his guy in there as the offensive line coach and as the run game coordinator as well. And the run game was pretty damn good down the stretch this year. As for MVP, you always put Russ in the MVP candidates, right? Because if they make a deep run, this is the year he gets a vote for NFL MVP. Other guys to watch, it's always the quarterbacks. Sorry, Taylor, Jonathan Taylor and Derrick Henry, you're not going to win the award. Patrick Mahomes will always be in it. Josh Allen will always be in it right now. Rodgers, if he plays. And I'll throw in Justin Herbert as the popular pick this year because that's how young QBs often get hyped for the award. Now, if you want to bet on MVP odds, real odds, they'll be available on BetUS. Plus, of course, you know, the Super Bowl going on on Sunday. 125% deposit bonus. Chatsports.com slash bet. you got to remember to use the promo code, though. Seahawks125. When you put that 100 bucks minimum, BetUS hook you up with 125% deposit bonus. You can bet on the game. There are all the prop bets available and, of course, the game itself. Rams minus 4.5. I already bet on the Bengals' money line to pull off the upset. Some nice return on your investment. And if you want to get wild, go do some prop bets. How about Rams score first? The Bengals are the underdog. They're the comeback kings. Over six total sacks. 
Shoot, the Rams might get the six sacks by themselves. And I think Hendrickson will get one for the Bengals as well. And I'll go on the Gatorade color being purple. Always just a fun bet to throw down there. Minus 140, minus 160, plus 450. That's just a fraction of the wide odds available on BetUS. So again, 100 bucks down when you use promo code CEOX125 at chatsports.com slash bet gets you a 125% deposit bonus. From Dat Fat Rat, what are the defensive tackle options for Seattle in the draft? Good question. Uh, if you're looking at, like, with your second round pick in particular, five names to keep an eye out for. Jordan Davis, do you want a big time run stopper? There's your guy. He is a massive human being. DeMarvin Leal, AM. Better as a three technique. He played a lot of five tech for AM defensive end in their 3 4 scheme to an extent. I think he's got high upside. Lower floor. Logan Hall, a bit of a tweener for me, but again, five through three technique, just like Trayvon Walker, who might be more of a true edge, but I think you want to give him some in interior D-line reps. I like some of those, those three names right there if one of them happens to be on the board because I want an impact three tech for Seattle. And Perrion Winfrey will be a three tech too, a bit bigger than some of those guys. Had a massive senior bowl for Oklahoma. So I don't mind going DT. I think a, an interior pass rusher is what this team needs. I would argue more so than an edge pass rusher so what do you think it is more important because i got the answer by the way for seattle to get right type in d for draft or type in f for free agency i think it's free agency because of all their cap space and lack of uh draft capital but let me know what you guys think in the comment section from jared stover do we actually have a chance of getting a true number one corner in the building of the offseason, or will we be only to pay a top free agent so we don't have much in the way of draft capital um you got money to spend. It comes down to how aggressive this team wants to be. Honestly, I kind of feel okay if DJ Reed's your number one corner again this year. Maybe I'm crazy, but I thought he was awesome this year. I don't think he'll break the bank. I would pay DJ because you got a lot of in-house in guys to take care of, right? Dwayne Brown, DJ Reed. You probably got to figure out Russell Wilson, Bobby Wagner. And if you take care of – oh, Quandra Diggs too. Thank you, Producer Sam. If you take care of those guys like Wagner and Wilson, you will create cap space for yourself in the process as well. So you absolutely can. I don't think Seattle's going to throw big money uh, at the cornerback position, but I think if we count DJ Reed as paying somebody, you might get happy. Devin's Clips – with the Z. When exactly can teams start making official trades and when they can, who should Seattle go after? So you can make a trade whenever. You can't be officially done until early in March, but you can do a trade right now if you want to agree to one. So rapid fire, some names to keep an eye out for. Andre Dillard would probably require your day two pick, maybe something else, depending on which one it is. And he's your left tackle of the future. I like it. You, we, we had a question about big-name corners. Xavier Howard to fill that mold. If he's too expensive, buy low guy. Noah Igbenogany, who has not played very much for the Miami Dolphins. And if you do move on from Bobby Wagner, which I don't want to do, how about Miles Jack? Jags are in a weird spot. They could blow it all up. And somebody like Jack could be, could be, I should say, affordable for Seattle. If they make a trade or any big move, you know we'll break it down. So if you haven't already... Subscribe to Seattle Seahawks today.